Hey and welcome everyone. This is another Warface video and its title is how to make Warface dollars 100% legit. So I'm sorry I have to disappoint the people who think I do own some mysterious codes which uh, makes you receiving a lot of Warface dollars or whatever or some third party app that will boost up in a mysterious way your income. Um, this video will be more or less an equipment guide for starters but also for well more experienced players hopefully and yeah a lot of viewers asked me wrote me messages commented on videos how does it come that you have that much warface dollars in game and um, well the answer is simple I try to play very economical and I see playing those co-op mission or special operation op missions as a, as a sport to play them with the lowest uh, equipment available to save costs on those. So that works quite well out for me. And I'm gonna let you know how that works in detail. So let's have a look. Without trying to show off, uh, here you can see the current amount of Warface dollars I have earned in-game. And let me tell you, this is something I haven't made up in a day or two. This is something I've been working on for weeks, if not months. Um, but playing very economical and how that works, approaching the game from a PvE side and playing economical, I'm gonna show you in this video. So we start, we're gonna have a look at our equipment in the inventory. And I have prepared the classes and um, have them all set to default stuff, weapon and armor wise, as you can see here. And the reason why is, I want to show you this way, if you run like this, you will basically have no costs. And the reason why is because these items do not have any purchase price, they, they, they are given free from the start. You just have to play the training missions and you will own them for free. So there can't be repair costs uh, calculated from those and that's why they don't have any repair costs. So if you want to run like no cost, this might be a good idea. Uh, there is other ways to do that, but uh, that, that will lead to the rental stuff and we want to talk about that later. So let's stick with the default stuff. Um, this is the way you have no costs, but indeed you will do have troubles playing normal, hard or especially insane with this equipment. Indeed, because you do not have a lot of fighting power and or firepower at all and you won't have um, a lot of armor um, with special little um, bonuses that help you getting through a life here or there through a couple of situations. So um, you are indeed looking, especially when you start in the game, you see all the other players with fancy warlord stuff or elite crown stuff or with their skins and you think like, ah, that's the way they make the kills and yes, they do, but they also do have a lot of costs for that. Always think about that. And think about also that if you play a mission, and even if you're the last player by scores, you do still get the same amount of Warface dollars, XP and VP. And um, that can be only increased if you're, for example, using any boosters. But that's something we want to talk about when we are having a look at the shop. So, um, indeed, as a beginner, you're starting to look for equipment that is better than the default stuff but doesn't raise your um, repair costs to a level where you can't afford it with the profits you get actually out of a mission because the, the, the win bonuses you get out of missions are actually kept very very low indeed because this is a free to play game and it's supposed to give you the feeling you have to spend some, some money to actually get ahead. Um, it will help you, it can dramatically help you if you spend some money but as you can see there's also a way to gain some Warface dollars uh, without spending real money. Um, quickly let me explain the two currencies you have. We do have here the credits. This is the, the real money you can put into the game. <coughs> and the Warface dollars. This is the money you can, uh, in-game money that you can uh, win or gain by playing missions. Um, that goes for all kind of missions though. That goes for co-op, special operations and versus games. So um, you're not limited to that. Okay, then we're gonna have a look at the unlock armor or equipment, weapons, attachments next. 
So here we are in our arsenal, the unlocks we can have and um, this is something you get by basically playing. You get VP, that is experience points ba ba basically for your arsenal. You can spend them, you have the selection in the game room between the three sections, weapons, armor and attachments. And I know you're all craving for guns and I did that in the beginning, but let me tell you. You can look up, look those guns up in the shop. They actually come with a purchase price, and that means you will have repair costs to them if you take them into a mission. So maybe something you want to get first is attachments, because they give you little bonuses on the weapons you already have, the default weapons, and they don't increase your um, repair costs. That won't do something majorly to your gun. But it might be smarter to go for the attachments first before you go for new weapons because you increase your system ones, existing ones you have already on a lower level and in this case even the default ones which have no repair cost. So you can save a lot of money there in the beginning if you restrict yourself a little bit to the crappy guns in the beginning just using new attachments before you get new guns. And next thing is I will get is the armor because there is some stuff that might be quite useful to you. Vests that give more armor. Helmets that give more armor and other special bonuses. Vests uh, that, that give more ammo capacity, but also, which what I really liked in the beginning was the assault gloves, which don't give you much more protection uh, or any more protection, but they help you to switch your weapons quicker. Actually, it decreases the time to switch between your weapon and think about a sniper, how happy he will be if he can switch from his main sniping rifle to a pistol in no time when a close combat enemy, ranged enemy appears and he can actually quicker defend himself against that. It's also nice for the medic or the engineer to switch to the armor kit or defibrillator or medikit and even the rifleman uh, makes use out of that switching quicker to his ammo crate, replenishing himself and others. So yeah, suggestion for me, attachments armor or divide them as much as you like. It's, it's your personal preference uh, where you want to put your VP points first. Um, so last thing for me was indeed the weapons to save some costs here on that side and um, well it's 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 fun though to have new weapons indeed because you get weapons with better stats naturally and then you can put attachments on them have them increased a little bit maybe focused for certain stuff uh, by that but it's also the more expensive way of increasing your uh, equipment and it will increase the costs and we want to looking here for yeah having no costs. So whenever you have the choice to go with a lower cost weapon, do that if it's enough for the mission or lower cost vest, armor piece, do that. You will save a lot of money playing the mission and um, pay attention to what repair costs you have on certain items playing certain missions and decide if you really want to take that next time into combat or not because um, if you want to make profit it might be too expensive and you have to search for a, a cheaper solution that is maybe not as good. Okay, the next thing we're gonna have a look at is the shop. So in the shop we have a quick look at the weapons. And let me tell you up front, there is no need to purchase any weapon until you have unlocked all the weapons um, that you can unlock under the unlocked sections we saw before. And um, the only in-between step for each class might be one gun or for the rifleman even three guns is there because there's two machine guns as well that do have um, a rental cost from 620 per day because that means they do have permanent costs of 3240 for the purchase and then you have that have little repair costs on that and that goes somewhere in between the common unlock and the rare unlock we see that here price wise so we have a gun that's a little bit more expensive than the ZX4084K 80, but does, be, does have better stats before we unlock the rare stuff, because we want to always unlock that a little bit and later the weapons, we could actually use the GU2. Come stats wise, almost the likes, a little bit worse, but saves you also a lot of costs already. Repairing a quarter here, if you compare the prices, 4400 almost. The GU2 has the purchase price of 3300 almost, to save roughly a quarter almost uh, on repair costs there as well. If we purchase the GU2, because the GU2 is not a weapon that you unlock, you have to buy it. So um, that's about the weapon section already. Do not unlock or purchase anything.
before you have done all the unlocks and uh, armor wise there is a couple of um, like exceptions I want to quickly speak, speak about there's for example the advanced rifleman helmet that uh, is a little bit cheaper than the unlocks we have the tactical rifleman helmet and the sapper helmet you can see it here on the price and it will cost by that lesser repair costs but you lose the ability with the, against the protection for flashbangs or you cannot detect uh, enemy directional mines but whenever does blackwood soldiers put that up against you basically never it would be only like teammates throwing a flashbang and blinding you but in a co-op come on suck it up and hide and come up once the the, the flashing has gone um, or if there's someone constantly annoying you maybe use the tactical rifleman helmet because it does give you the protection against blinding uh, is cheaper than a sapper helmet indeed and um, even in that case you will be good if you get flashbang so um, vest wise we could talk hours about those um, there is for each class some vests are for all classes some vests are for for a certain class uh, a lot of options uh, special protections more protection more protection against sniper bullets melee explosives and all that I just add to the missions also the hardness level I found that really really hard because there's a lot of vests especially if you consider all the classes that they have extra vests uh, what you have available how much that costs compare that use that I have found myself a solution to that to not do that anymore actually uh, as a beginner doll my tip get the extra strong west maybe it gives you that bit more protection against almost anything even if it says bullets only there um, it's basically a west that gives you a bit more protection and it's, it's really great by that because um, you just have a bit more protection against the default compared to the default west for a little bit more repair costs there it's, it's not a very expensive West with 1000 Warface dollar costs there and yeah that's about that all those vests though will um, lose their armor that you get hit you lose your armor and doesn't come back until you reach a checkpoint um, so there is other options to that uh, we, here we have the ultra unlock but options to that is armor regenerative and we find that actually on the Warlord Rifleman West for example that's a very very expensive one though that will kill your profit in almost every game I use that very very ra rarely on insane missions in co-op or um, special operations it's probably basically something more for PvP um, so we should always find a solution to have not that West actually running maybe or something else um, something that's maybe not the best solution to have something else would be the elite crown west that would give you actually a little bit more damage protection also give you the armor regener regeneration gives you bonuses that are very interesting a little different a little bit um, thing with those with the warlord and the elite crown is though first off you can use them only for one class then not you cannot use them for all classes you can rent one per class uh, or buy one per class and that's the other thing elite crown stuff you can only rent cannot buy that you have to gain crowns in the missions before you'll be able to rent one of those and let me tell you you won't be able enough making crowns to rent stuff continuously um, maybe one item if you're really really good and go for all crowns every day you might be able to rent one item per week continuously uh, otherwise you will be losing more crowns than you're making at some point there won't be any left and you're standing there not being able to rent any of the crown stuff so that's for me more an option I use when there's especially the event going on like the XP double XP weekend last week yeah last weekend so um, purchase cost mm, that's the last option you're gonna buy in the shop warlord rifleman west just for the insane and super hard special operation missions um, else than that we do have an alternative solution and that is for me the frontline west and we see the purchase price is actually the same than the warlord um, so why would we not buy that because we would have the same repair cost probably then on the warlord but we do not get the extra benefits out of the warlord but if you have to purchase it like the warlord because you can only purchase it then um, you cannot really take it to normal missions because there it will just cost too much and you won't get the costs out for that so it would be ridiculous taking that with you there um, you searching for a split and I found my split my solution here in the frontline west 
that's a personal solution. I'm gonna show that to you. Doesn't mean you have to do this. By, uh, by far not, but it is an option when you play actually quite a lot. If you, for example, play it every day at least the five co-op missions through to get the, the mission daily mission bonus on them, um, this is the best to be, because you will make enough money to have a benefit every week and still have the 7,650 Warface dollars to rent that one. And if you have rented that, remember we do not have any repair costs on rented stuff. So um, using that will basically zero fi the costs for your wests for the next week because uh, you're gonna use that a lot and the good thing about it is you can use it for any class you purchase that or rent it once um, and you can use it as you can see here for each class the work for each class uh, it doesn't come though with any benefits else than armor regeneration so it doesn't give you super 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 extra pluses on armor regen uh, or uh, armor protection resistance but um, it has the ability of that regenerating. So when you're being hit, go and cover, let it come back, and you'll be able to charge ahead again. That's why you want to have this frontline west that will enable you to go in, in harder missions and have it easier there. And when you have rented it, you can also take it to normal and don't have to worry about repair costs. So far for the west, uh, you have the same option here on the helmets, basically. That gives you health regeneration. The Warlord, you can only purchase that and you cannot use that everywhere because it's so expensive, it will increase your costs so much it will kill the profit in most of the missions, maybe insane or hard special operations. Uh, you can actually justify the income or the costs with the income there um, before you're gonna use that. Or you're having maybe an, a, a Warface dollar VIP booster running, um, but as a free to play player, you don't even have that option. So. Uh, you probably won't use that too often, even if you buy it, and as much as uh, it seems appealing. The other option is indeed renting against the helmet, and that's the same problem. You probably don't make enough uh, crowns per week to continuously uh, invest 1000 crowns to have that rented continuously, but use that maybe for special events, double XP weekend would have been such a event. Collect the crowns until there, get some stuff, and do not only have the bonus, have the zero repair cost on the helmet and the west as well. And um, I want to close this section because we talked a long time already and we could talk hours about this. Uh, quickly talk about the gloves. And there's nothing I have actually purchased until I have unlocked everything uh, else than the protective gloves. Or the assault gloves, one of those. Because these I've been continuously using for either a little bit more protection or a uh, bit more selection speed, like switching from the main weapon to your pistol or to your medikit a little bit quicker. Um, until I had the mobility gloves unlocked, and you have something like the mobility gloves in every class, which is called different. For the medic, it will be, for example, the light gloves, engineer, it's the engineer gloves, and sniper, it's the multi purpose gloves. They all do the same because they increase your weapon selection speed and they increase your load, load speed. Both of that will be able to, do, to either do your specialties quicker or help you very much in killing stuff quicker. Especially when you're in a bad situation and someone's close and you're running out of a magazine, you just switch to the pistol quicker and finish that enemy off. So, Warlord gloves are great, but since I had the mobility gloves unlocked, I'm using them wherever I could use the Warlord gloves, because you see I have uh, the purchase price would be uh, a fifth of the Warlord Gloves and so is the repair costs so it's always much cheaper to use the mobility Gloves and I can't even think about a game where I wouldn't like to use them. So that's my tip to you. Boot wise, basically I had here my unlocks too and I don't know if it was the protective boots I purchased here and the sprinting shoes are unlocked later on. That was the both boots that more or less got me through. The one goes in a bit more protection, the one goes in a little bit more sprinting duration. Can be useful in hard missions, insane missions, because you see more than double the costs, almost four times the costs, and uh, that will already increase your your uh, costs, repair costs a lot. Um, the rest, there is interesting boots, like the sliding boot, interaction of mine boots, but they're very expensive. Um, if you purchase them, they're nice when you get them, for rental time out of a daily bonus for example or level up use them they're very great but by the costs I always find it more interesting than to use the fast shoes because 
faster, increase your speed when sprinting and crouching. That's what we're looking for and if you're looking like for quick shoes. And that's the important benefits out of the Warlord boots here. Uh, they also give some leg protection, you have to miss that on the fast shoes. Uh, I run rather away though from a RPG or a grenade uh, instead of standing there and taking damage. So for me the fast shoes are the much cheaper uh, choice because you have a fifth of the repair cost or purchase cost and you unlock them anyway after a while. So use them wherever you would else use the Warlord boots because you'll be almost the same as good in my humble opinion. That's how we're gonna close the shop section and now I'm gonna tell you how I actually plan a game and then have low costs hopefully on it. Today's mission I'm gonna plan out to you as an example is the mission Deadfall and it's a normal mission and you will probably say Hafkes you're a pussy why are you just going in a normal to show us that? Well actually from our approach, the economical approach, the normal is actually the tougher one. It's easier to play, yes, but it's tougher to calculate because you get lesser income. And um, I think on the normal mission, you do with the daily mission bonus get maybe 400 war phase dollars uh, if you play it through. Um, so that's really low, that's really low where you can go with the repair costs. So, um, and I choose a helicopter mission because of something else I will show you. So let's have a, a look in our inventory and today we're gonna be the rifleman indeed because we started showing off with him. Um, on the weapon side you can see I'm all normal and I would have no cost as we said in the beginning. Um, though I wanna see if I do have some um, weapons that are on rental time and we can see I do have the Halloween gun and I suggest everyone to play Cyberhawk once it's available and when you play it through you get a Halloween gun. It differs each time it might be for another class, uh, a different time, maybe just one day, maybe three days, maybe seven days. And you can see if you play it a lot you can really add up, you stack up those rental times and I basically have this gun already for two months. I could play it for two months and have no repair costs ever on the main gun. So that's great. I also have the option for the Halloween Assault Rifle, which I didn't have that much long anymore. And I also do have the choice for the AR-88, uh, which is a thing I got from Crytek and a lot of other players for playing Rifleman for a certain weekend a couple of weeks ago. So that was the uh, reward for that. Also, um, uh, the Scout Ammo Pack, a better ammo pack, gives some benefits and compared to the basic one, you can purchase that, but then it will come probably with repair costs. In my case, I have it on a rental time and want it. So, grenade wise, we are also the same. But the main weapon we have set, but we want to have a look at the pistol in here as well. And we could go with the high fire pistol, that is enough for the normal mission. But let's see if I have something on rental, and yes, I do. It's the Aquatic Assassinator, still have for a couple of hours, and especially since there is a helicopter in the mission, and Aquatic Assassinators really, really are good to kill helicopters. I'm gonna take that with me and have no repair costs. The Executor Knife is something you're probably gonna have with you all the time if you're not going melee all the time, um, because it just gives you no repair costs. If you're gonna stick to your primary weapon, why increasing the costs on the melee weapon by having their super super cool melee weapon with you if you're not going to use it. Uh, else than that, I do have the Digger of Doom for a couple of hours still on rental time, so I'm using that for no cost and have a better melee weapon with me for no cost. That's acceptable then. So we're good on the weapon side. As we can see, we still have no costs and increase our um, yeah firepower actually a lot by having rental stuff already and. I'm not telling you to actually rent stuff, I'm telling you just wait for um, the daily lock-in bonus, the level ups you will have and the guns that come then for a couple of days. Always use them because they're actually good guns even if they feel a little bit weird to you in the beginning and they have no repair costs. So use them, use them, use them when you get them um, for the no repair costs. Then we are set basically already with the weapons and we can have a look at the armor side. It could stay like this, have no costs, it's possible. But it's gonna be a very, very tactical gameplay. We have to hide a lot then, um, run from corner to corner to approach certain enemies, to be very careful. We don't wanna have RPG guys shooting at us, for example. We don't wanna have spec up shooting at us. We always have to make sure we can jump into cover in the next second again. That is a much different day gameplay instead of having like complete warlord out, uh, outfit where you go very aggressive indeed because you can take some damage. So. Um, 
If you're okay with playing tactical, maybe hanging a bit back with the team, you can save costs by just using the fault, but it gets you killed very, very quickly. And if you don't want to be killed, because you want to actually make kill and make sure you all get through the missions, you might want to stay alive. So we're going to have a quick look what we can actually put there. Since we don't have any helm on rental time, I'm going to go for the Advanced Rifleman Helmet. Um, I could stay with the default one, but this one gives you a little bit more protection. and like that more protection if, if someone comes to there and gives me headshots. Uh, might be taking one shot more than usual and can maybe dodge. Um, vest wise, it'd probably be smart to stay with the default one, even though you will, will be killed quickly, because every other vest will increase costs quite quickly, and a normal is questionable if you really, really use that. If you don't want to be super aggressive, um, when I started, I started using the extra strong vest, I said, might be a good option for not the worst costs here. Uh, you could do if you're crazy like me and play as much as I do and get as much Warface dollars per week with this economic gameplay, you will be able to afford renting the frontline west. That means I have no costs on that. Indeed, I'm gonna do that since I have that available. Love wise, um, well, there is, as said already, always the option between protective gloves and um, assault gloves. If you wanna go higher, uh, there you can find them there. Assault gloves improves the weapon selection speed. Uh, instead, the Default gloves, if you feel they are too less. Um, default gloves are great because gloves don't do so much and why not save your costs and having no costs on them. Um, once you do unlock the mobility gloves and there is something alike for every glass, just different default. For example, the medic has the light gloves. Uh, what can you see them? The other dark gloves. The engineer does have the engineer gloves <laughs> and the sniper does have the multi purpose gloves. So, going back to the Rifleman, since I do have them, I find this is my most vital part of, of armor actually, because it increases your weapon selection speed and the reload speed, and that's something that will make you more, will make you make more kills. Maybe save your ass when you can pull out your pistol quicker, or you just reload quicker and can shoot back quicker. So you naturally have more kills using that, making more use out of the particular gun you're using. I don't like to take them off anymore actually. Even though, they start from, well, let's say 30 Warface dollars and easily up to 60, 70 uh, repair costs here, depending on how long a mission is. Uh, I couldn't imagine though living without them anymore. Personal preference indeed. Um, first, you want to probably go between default gloves, assault gloves, and protective gloves, something between that. Uh, last option, I could actually stay with the default boots, though there is a helicopter shooting explosives on the ground might want to go a bit more protective than here, not too expensive, and remember there was the protective boots, they don't cost so much repair costs, so I'm gonna select them for here, and actually this outfit we have put here on with the weapons and the armor, I will take actually into hard missions, um, so we're really well outfitted, but hopefully for not too much costs, and yeah, let's play the mission and see how much costs we have. So as we could see, I had an income of 416 Warface dollars, the game that was uh, 400 for the mission first win bonus, um, and with the first win bonus, and another 16 because we had done a bonus in the game. And um, I had costs, gloves, I said that already, that's gonna be the most expensive, 10 on those. The helmet, only 6. The boots for a bit more protection as well, only 4. And frontline wears none, weapons none. Awesome, so 20 costs in total, and that means I had a total income really in this game of 396, and that's actually for me a very, very great amount. I like to be under 50% costs to have actually a sense to play the mission, and being below 10% is just super terrestrial, you know? It's just great. So, um, well, you've seen I didn't have the biggest scores. But let me tell you, due to the Aquatic Assassinator, I was quite successful in shooting down a helicopter. <laughs> but we all got the same money, unless uh, someone had a VIP indeed, so you would get a little bit more. Um, yeah, so that's how you make basically money. Couple of tips, play five, play the five co-op missions per day, try to go low costs like, like I've shown you here, 
Indeed, you have to maybe go adjust it a little bit for hard and insane, and depending on the missions, if there's a mech, not a helicopter, you might want to be fast or more protective on the shoes, for example, or on the gloves. Um, whatever you feel is better for you to, to survive in that mission and get kills. Because uh, I like to survive, even if it's not necessary. Don't cry if you, if you die. Still play to the end, because you get the money out of it. Same as if you wouldn't have died. Um, I just find it, I can really tell an outfit is sufficient if I didn't have to die, basically. Um, and that's not only coming from the outfit, that's also skill, knowing the map, knowing where the shields turn up. You know that experienced players suddenly stop at a corner, and why do they do that? They let you run as the unexperienced player first there, because they know there's a shield waiting. So the shield knocks you over and they can shoot it down. And that's what you're gonna do when you are more experienced indeed. So, um, most, most of your protection is not even coming from your armor, it's coming from your experience skills, so to say. Um, how quickly can you shoot someone down? That also depends though into the guns. You might be good and dare to have really a sufficient gun there and not be under equipped with the gun. Because uh, that can save you actually armor costs on the other hand. But balance that because a too heavily cost the gun will just ruin the profit. So, do the 5 games per day, maybe a special operations. I told you, get, do the cyber horse as much as often as you can do, because um, there you get like free guns for a couple of days, and you can stack those days up, and then you have a gun there that is quite good how they come actually. Um, not the best indeed, there is much better guns than that, but you'll be quite good in the co-op missions might even on insane feel good with those Halloween guns and you have absolutely no repair costs with them. And playing Cyber Horde gets you a little bit money as well, so think about that. Uh, I even go low costs without uh, Warlord on normal um, Cyber Horde, so save a lot of money there. Um, yeah, so that's about um, what games you should play if you approach from the P uh, co-op side, PvE side. And what you should always do, if you even not if you're not able to play once a day, uh, which is quite understandable. Not everyone has time every day to play. I do not have time to play every day. There's days where I don't play. Um, so um, still lock in the game. Still lock in the game because you grab the daily lock in bonus, and that could be a gun for a couple of days. So you save on the main gun on a class. The costs, repair costs, maybe maybe an outfit item that you can use on a couple of. Uh, uh, classes or all classes like um, gloves for example it just saves you costs and you have something better than default think about it like that and use the XP events and here comes a tip um, even for the VIPs um, when there is an XP event when you get double XP there's usually more VP and more Warface dollar as well for example, last weekend, what was it? Double XP, but 50% more Warface dollars per game. So that usually comes along with some XP events. Um, indeed, VIPs or people who purchase credits, they might want to um, choose the time when they use actually a VIP status, which I can purchase in a shop. In a shop. Um, especially at this time, because it stacks up. The bonuses do stack up in Warface. You can combine VIPs with double XP events or uh, different VIP methods or just boosters on certain things. Um, yeah, for example, it's it's unnecessary to have a VP booster running if you have unlocked everything. You know, you don't need experience in these arsenal points anymore. So think about it in the XP events. Uh, for free-to-play players, there's also something to consider. If there's a double XP event, hmm, why not using some collected crowns you have gathered and use them maybe for vest or helmet and um, raise the costs on that part while this double XP more money event um, to zero on some parts you have and just make it possible for you to maybe go into special operations and harder levels or insane levels. So um, even you can add up to this bonus by that, by decreasing your costs basically on certain parts to nothing. Um, yeah, and that's my tips, that's how I get through missions quite economically, not always being the best player though. Um, 
If you like those tips, if you think there's something useful, leave a uh, thumb up. If you think I missed something out, should explain something more detailed, you can always write me a comment under this video. And um, yeah, else than that, subscribe if you like and see you next time. Good night and good fight.